Okay. This is going to be a, a method of using speed control that's based on the ground speed of the aircraft. And it's, I found that it's the least math intensive method of determining proper spacing on the final. So the way it works is the uh, ground speed on the controller's display is depicted like this is 120 knots. It will show up as 12. 180 knots will show up as 18. So it just so happens that the aircraft will fly that amount of distance in the same amount of time. To prove that, uh, this guy is uh, every 60 knots is a mile a minute. So 120 would be two miles per minute, okay? This guy's 12 miles out from the airport, two miles a minute. That takes him six minutes to fly that far. A guy doing 180 is three miles a minute. Six minutes times three miles a minute is 18 miles. So that, that proves the fact that he will fly 12 when he flies 18, okay? Also notice uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna figure their speeds at these, these speeds, notice this is slow guy followed by fast guy, which is typically the biggest challenge. We're going to figure these speeds all the way to the runway. Once we've done that, all we have to do is add our separation requirement. Because as you can see the way it's shown right now, those aircraft would get to the runway at the same time. So we've got we've to have this faster airplane four miles we're going to use for separation. And, and why four? Because Three miles is my, my separation standard typically behind a small aircraft or large, following large. But if you're following a heavy, of course, you would, you would have to do the uh, five miles or six with a small following a heavy. Whatever the separation requirement is, we wanna, we're, we're gonna add a mile for compression. You, you guys, I assume, know what compression means. So rather than going, well, when he's 12 miles out, He's got to be 18 miles out. We're just going to add four miles. That's the separation plus compression. Okay. And for the rest of this dis display, this this we're going to we're going to be using four miles. Okay. Again, if you're following a heavy jet, you wouldn't use four miles. You would use whatever the separation requirement is plus compression. Okay. All right. Notice there, there's two ways of figuring of figuring this out. Some people get one, some get the other. If you can get both, it's really helpful because there's different situations where you'll use either method. The first method is what I just explained. When he's 12 miles out, this guy needs to be 18 miles out plus four. For separation, he would need to be 22 miles out, okay? So that would be helpful if you were up here on base leg and you were having to widen him out to get the, the proper spacing behind this. Let's say we'll call this guy a Cessna up in front. Okay, so 12 miles, you take the full speed here. 12 miles is his full speed, right? You just take his full speed and add four. That's where he needs to be, you're golden. You switch him to the tower, clear him for the approach, you're done with him. The second method is looking at the difference in their speed and trying to figure out how much space do I need for that. And again, we're gonna add four for the separation. During that, using that method, you measure from the front airplane. Okay, so let me explain that. All right, right, right now the difference in their speed is 60 knots or six, the difference between 12 and 18. How much do I need for every 10 knots? In this scenario here, just look at the front guy, his distance to fly over his speed tells me what I need for 10 knots, okay? So uh, I've got a 60 knot difference, I need one mile for every 10 knots. That's really helpful when, you're, when you've got the, the slow guy on final and the, the fast guy's on base and you're trying to figure out where to widen out. If I know I only need six miles between them, then I'll know right when to turn them in. Remember, 60 knots, I need, a, I need a mile for every 10 knots, so I need six miles. That's just for the speed. I need four more miles for separation. Always gotta add for the separation, so I need 10 miles behind that guy in this scenario, okay? Now let's take both of those methods and we'll advance the problem uh, three minutes to where now the, to get the guy doing 120 knots is now going to be on a six mile final and the guy doing 180 knots is now on a nine mile final, okay? Again, notice that it's still two miles a minute, still three miles a minute, okay? Notice they're a lot closer now than they were back there. Um, all you have to do is look at the front guy and again, his distance to fly, in this case six, tells me what I need for every 10 knots. 
So when you're running your problems, that's always where the equation starts. It always starts with that front guy, okay? I'm over here on the uh, base leg. Well, let's, let's just put him on the downwind because we haven't based him yet. Doing 180 knots, and I'm going, hmm, when do I base him? All right? I look right here, and I go, hey, he's got six miles to fly. He's doing 120 knots. That's half. Every 10 knots needs a half a mile now. Still got a 60 knot difference. What's half of six? Three. Three plus four, seven miles. And you can do that in less than five seconds. Once you train yourself what you're looking for, you glance at that front guy, you come up with that magical fraction, whatever it is. Typically, we use whole and half because it's easier fractions for people. If this guy were on a four mile final, it'd be one third, four over 12. That's the only math to the thing. It's not, not real complicated, at least I don't think. Uh, so anyway, if I was shooting for seven miles, I'd be basing this guy. I'd be basing him now. Distance over and over. Boom, off we go. Um, go back to the other method, which I call the, the ground speed itself. You measure both of those from the airport. All right, six is half of 12. Let's just throw this guy right here and see if that's good or not, okay? Just threw it up there. I'm, I'm, I'm on the final and I want to know whether or not I'm good. I look you here, six over 12 is half. What's half of 18? Nine plus four for separation should be on a 13 mile final from the airport. Five, 10, 11, 12, 13. I've got an extra mile, I'm golden. The, ben the benefit of learning this method, one of the benefits, other than it tells you exactly whether you're gonna be proper spacing at the airport, but the other benefit is I can also adjust this guy using that same method. Let's, let's put him a mile too close and talk about how we would adjust it, all right? We needed to be at 13 miles out, didn't we, at 180. Let's put him on a 12 mile final. We'll go, oh, okay, I looked at this and, and I wanted to see whether I'm good. Again, starts here, six miles over 12 equals a half. I'm going back to the difference in their speed now. 60 knot difference, what's half of six? Three plus four for separation, seven. Measure from the airplane, two, four, six, seven. Uh-oh, I'm a mile too close. How much do I pull them back? Every 10 knots is a half a mile, it's that easy. Mile too close, 20 knots. Boom, switch them to the tower. Another Helpful method sometimes to people who don't want to do the figuring of the math as much uh, is if I, I know at 180 knots that if I base 13 miles out from the airport, somewhere along here, I know that at 180 knots I'm set up to be cleared for the approach when the slow guy is at half of his speed. Now I'm not even have to really do a lot of math. Okay, let's throw a uh, Let's throw a 100 knot airplane uh, right here. All right, to one, two, five and a half mile final, 100 knots. I know that when he gets to half of his speed, in other words, five miles, then I'm 13 out from the airport. I clear him for the approach. Whether I clear him here or whether I wait and clear him here, I'm still 13 miles at that point. So it's golden. That doesn't require a lot of math. Just 180 knots, bring them out here to about a 13 mile final and base them, and now wait till the slow guy gets to half of his speed. What if he has, it, what if it's not, not quite so close like that? Let's put him back here doing 100 knots. Aha, now I'm going, my 180 knotters over here on the downwind, all right? And I'm going, okay, he's pretty far from that, from his half point, half of his speed to the airport. He's pretty far from there, especially at that speed. You might want to drag your 180 knotter a little bit wider out here, okay? As he gets closer to that magical halfway point, you want to be right here at 13. So you just turn them in early, turn them in later, pull back some speed. At this point, every 10 knots is half a mile. Again, once he gets up there, so I'll know if I'm too tight, I know how much to pull him back. Out here, 10 knots is a mile, so all that same stuff applies except that you need, you need a mile for every 10 knots out here. That proves that 10 knots is not always half a mile. Mo most people that I know of like to vector these guys close to the final, to the outer marker, and do this with them until they can get in there. 
And that's because in this area, 10 knots usually is half a mile. And so usually that will work. Uh, but there are cases where it doesn't. The, the math doesn't lie. The ground speed doesn't lie. How about if I'm going on a real windy day and I'm doing 80 knots? And I'm right here on about a, let's say a six mile final at 80 knots. Guess what I need for every 10 knots of overtake? Uh-oh, I need three-fourths of a mile. That's why on real windy days, controllers have a have tough time following these slow guys because they're, they're, the common uh, system that they were using, that 10 knots is half a mile, all of a sudden doesn't work. And that guy's close to the outer marker too. That's, you know, it's not, we're not taking them way out here. Questions, Al? Got any questions? Can you think of anything I need to add? Uh, just emphasizing that the distance that you're coming up with is the distance from the threshold out. We're always talking about the distance to the threshold, knowing where we are. You apply that same fraction All to the back guy's speed. He could be, uh, one real quick, and I'll be done here on this one. He could be at 220 knots. And I know that when this guy let's see, doing 120 on a six mile final. I can look, look, I can see that right there and go, okay, what's half of 22? 11 plus four needs to be 15 miles out from the airport. That took five seconds. Difference in speed, again, six, six over 12 is half. What's the difference? 100 knots. What's half of 10? Five plus four for separation, nine. Needs to be nine miles behind them. If you do, you'll notice if you do that, the math works out equal in either one of those methods. So whichever one is best for you, that's what you should use. And that's it.